What's up everyone and welcome back to second episode of the engine swap on Volkswagen Golf Mark 4 or Jetta and today everything you need to know how to install the engine our engine is still hanging on a chain and almost ready to be installed into the engine bay but before you will go for it you need to check the distance between the transmission housing flange and contact surface of the torque convector that distance should be 21 millimeter reposition until correct distance is obtained that's very important otherwise that won't going to happen the transmission won't fit the engine align the studs on the torque convector with the holes in a drive plate that's one thing you need to pay attention for and also there is a, a stud that is a pin on the engine block which needs to be aligned with a pin hole on a transmission housing and there are only two of them one on the left one on the right those things you need to watch for and we have our engine supported and uh, it still is hanging it's uh, using a cherry picker as a line the engine with the transmission make sure it's same height and start just wiggling from side to side and make sure nothing's in between the engine and transmission housing watch for that plate move the wires if needed just look around make sure it's aligned vertically and horizontally look for a tilt Just pay attention to those uh, torque connector studs, make sure they go through the drive plate holes. As you can see, my engine needs to go a hair up, like turn it up, and those holes and pins align, and that when you need to stir it with. And see, it's I just supporting, pushing in, and it's all connected together. I'm because I know my torque connector and studs aligned with the holes it's all connected it's not tight yet but you can see it's all matching and it just uh, like hold it with a white screw for now it really helps i found that's very well and it has no way to go and now we can start if, as you can see that torque converter stud is looking through the hole on a drive plate that's red one we marked which was, was first and start putting the transmission housing bolts and there is a bunch of bolts around the housing different sizes pay attention to that and we put one on top then going to put one on another side on the bottom and see, as you can see that's a bottom bolt and it's close to the engine firewall. I always recommend you to start with the bolts by hand. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. And pay attention to that stud. Now we're putting a starter back because those two starter bolts, they're also the fasteners for the transmission mounted to the engine yeah just uh, clean the thread make sure there's no any debris or rust on threads and just go and start it turning those bolts by hand we got bottom bolt already started let's align the starter let's align that transmission it should be aligned and it will go all the way through a long bolt and you can see it goes into the threads on the engine wall look at that how many parts we still need to install they're all laid down nicely on the tarp then you can see the scale how much work needs to be done before you can fire up the engine and take it for a test drive it's quite a bit of stuff to install back but it's all doable it's all possible no worries we'll go step by step and cover almost every single detail if you still have any questions or something is not really clear i tried my best ask in the comments down below boom 
let's see how it became it's just a picture after we all install but consider to subscribe will help me with the channel and as you can see there is more bolts to put back there's uh, our clean bolts we getting them ready and I also recommend you to apply a light coat uh, red or let's um, thread sealant and it will help to protect the threads and protect the bolts from getting loose yeah lock threader is great stuff you can see there's another bolt to install good to go and here's a torquing in uh, diagram and uh, way you need to torque the bolts and the pattern of it and you can just put on pause where we tie the housing to the engine now the time to tie the torque converter and to hold the bolt in a socket I just use an electrical tape which is simple thing you just hip and that not won't fall into the transmission housing or that if it will happen you need to split the transmission again as you can see there's the inspection hole then how you can attach the torque conductor to the dry plate and we're starting turning that bolt clockwise and start it slowly make sure it's going on the threads and then tie it with a wrench but don't torque it just go until it will just stop with no resistance because we don't want to tie one bolt and get other not be installed there's a way you don't want to just unevenly tie the torque converter just use the wrench and turn the crankshaft until another stud will show up and do the same procedure for next stud as you can see i'm turning the crankshaft always turn turn the crankshaft clockwise and as you can see another the last stud showed up and it's only three nuts we need to install back beautiful sunny day by the way start it by hand just make sure it's going straight <laughs> be careful not drop the nut inside a one <laughs> won't be possible to take it out you need to split the engine transmission and then start tightening the bolt as you can see i'm not even locking the crankshaft against the frame now i torque them and ready for the torque wrench that's important and we'll torque all of them make sure they're all tight it's, yeah it's funny angle to film and do the job underneath i just uh, put my phone on the ground okay now i lock the crankshaft from turning with the ratchet against the vehicle chassis and i throw that nut and you go to the next and the last one will be the third one all good to go done and put a dust cap that dust cap came with that smiley face it's the original engine we'll put the same one someone's draw that before us all right 13 mil
as you can see our new studs actually there will be another video how to remove the broken studs and, and put in new ones and our gasket for the exhaust manifold on a down stream pipe and boom make sure those studs are straight if they're not straight they won't fit because there's no room to wiggle even and start it in nuts turn it by hand go all the way down but don't torque it then go across and do another one then up and then across on diagonal down as soon as you started all of them and run the nuts down to the bottom and then you can tie them on a cross pattern good that done now time to connect our upstream oxygen sensor that's uh, you can see there was a way how we remove that and in the first video now everything is coming back in place where it's originally was sitting there's a connector only one way you can connect that male and females click click all good put it back into the housing and uh, that's pretty much it for this and slide that connector into the housing there's a slot uh, two, two 10 millimeters nuts for all the connectors all right tie that and uh, secure the harness with the metal clips to the vehicle chassis and that all good good put the cv axle little cover over the join tie those two bolts Now time for the engine mount. There is one, two, three bolts. There are different sizes. Just pay attention to that. And now we're going to install the side engine mount. Pretty simple, but you need to make it fit. There's enough room. Just put it back. All right, we got that mount back. Now we need to get bolts in place and start tightening them one on the bottom it's, it's just enough room to get them back but it's pretty tight one on the bottom and one on the side and one at the top in that little drilled well this is a back one which is close to the firewall and here we go together yeah, with the open range ratchet probably won't fit I tried that one we got it and that center one just it is yeah, we still can get enough room I pushed my camera and camera moved <laughs> That like that part of chassis and that fender is loose. Good, good. Now time to torque those three bolts. They're holding the engine bracket. There's an engine side part, as it will be another part to install, but that's one first. Then you would torque it, and when 
foot torque it to the 35 foot pounds and then angle torque to 90 degrees yes one quarter of the turn all right there's the upper part there's the bushing part that uh, bracket is important for adjusting the distance between the engine and the vehicle's frame that you need to pay attention and we're getting to that soon all right Right, our favorite blue block thread compound. That sealant works good. Start those upper bolts on the chassis side first. They have no adjustments to go from side to side, up and down. That just needs to be tied to the frame. That's simple. Those two parts needs to be installed first we installed the bracket to the engine and now we're installing the next part to the chassis and then we'll connect them together that's the way you need to install them then we'll the torque torque the bolts one and two Here we go, and now we are need to do angle torque. I'm going for the same one quarter of the turn, 90 degrees. That's what our manual tells us to do. And then we're all good. If it's perfect, it means it's good enough. Look at that beauty. That little mark moved one quarter of the turn same at the back and now we need to install the and actually not need to install but we need to put the engine bracket and the chassis bushings all together i align the holes make sure they started by hand nicely they should be free. Here we go. There is a distances you need to watch A and B, upper and bottom, and as you put on pause, that's all dimension and specs there. Just to measure, make sure it's not an angle, it's not uh, sided more to one side and or another. Just pay attention because you need that proper spacing between the pulleys that or bracket sits. Otherwise, it will be too tight. You need to consider that and watch for the clearances, and you will be fine. If you still have any question, yeah, feel free to ask down in the comments below. Check the distance, use a pry bar to pry it, hold it, and then you can tie it one nut and tie it another one. And that one move will stay in place. You tie them with a wrench, like so. Tie tight. Like normal with torque them. The torque wrench, boom boom, and as you can assume, we need to do the angle torque same way. Put to mark on a bolt and on a housing, straight mark, and then do one 
quarter of a turn, 90 degrees. That's what uh, Volkswagen Audi manual recommends to do. And you done everything to the specs. No one say it was done wrong. <laughs> Okay, our engine mounted to the vehicle, it's all into the engine bay. You can load down, move your cherry picker away, get yourself a little bit more space. Now it's time for all those electrical harnesses, connectors, vacuum lines. I start from the very back, move it out to the front from one side to another. All right, that is our power steering, high pressure line. Arrange the fitment of that line through that harnesses madness. Make sure it's not entangled. Make sure it's all in same original position in the spot. The bracket, how it goes, and there is a certain places to attach. Make sure it's all secured. All cables. There is our cable to the starter solenoid that hot wire and as you can see there's a plastic mounting brackets to hold the harnesses actually all those fasteners the sticking bolts with the threads just align those brackets with the holes and tie them down just watch for uh, harness routing, make sure they just uh, run in the same position, you don't want to jam them, you don't want to put them too tight, because if you don't put them in a proper routing way, they will be probably not reaching the connections, or be too tight and then won't work on a longer run. As you can see, we need to deal with that just to uh, take your time so that I said it's doable and yeah I'm done pretty much with those wire rings harnesses now securing that uh, power steering pressure high pressure line that's done it's common wire to the starter boom boom connected there's a little bracket for the power steering line. Alright. Put the transmission harness into the Sorry, plastic just... clip. Connect the connector at the back of the transmission. There's a speed sensor. There's the transmission control solenoid. Connections uh, put uh, like coolant hoses, heater core hoses. There's another connector for the transmission backups. Uh, this reverse lights, input sensors, output sensors for the transmission our shafts. All those uh, coolant lines, all that connected. Make sure those uh, hose clamps in place, put them into the original position, otherwise they might attempt to leak. Okay, that's... Uh, be careful with the plastic hoses and... Not the hoses, with the plastic connectors. Yeah, there's a lot of plastic parts in the Volkswagen. When you fill the hoses, be careful. That's a uh, uh, bracket for the starter wires and wires from the alternator connect the wires to the alternator this hot wire the signal wire make sure it's all in place and tight you can you should hear a click when you push that connector into the okay there's another bolt now another nut there's a stud Tied everything. And there's a coolant temperature sensor. Connect that. This 
still have a bunch of connectors to put back. The coolant line for the throttle body. Start connecting all those hoses. All right, now is the time for fuel injector harness. Connect those ones. There's the sensors for the connectors for the bottom sensor, knock sensors on the side of the engine. Run that little wire there. Camshaft positioning sensor. It's time for that guy to be connected. We need him. All right. As you can see, I'm just placing the uh, fuel injector harness just in place. Make sure it's all in an original position and start connecting those uh, injector plugs. One by one, when you push that uh, connector down, it should make an audible click. As you can hear, click, it's all fully connected and will be sealed. It won't get loose. Pay attention for to that. Place the harness into the holder. Nice and tight, everything's getting into the original place. Always look around, make sure you're not missing anything. I uh, see that little uh, wire down to the knock sensor needs to get into that little metal bracket. Now, time to put our power steering pump back. There's the bolts, align the holes, make sure. Everything's aligned nicely. Should start easily by hand. I think everywhere in the world they got it up. Same thing. Pretty easy. Yeah, we needed to take that power steering from the bracket. We didn't disconnect the line, so we just let it hang. Now time for the power steering pulley. Put it back, same place where it was originally. Yeah, quite a bit of work, yeah, but we're getting probably half done, even more. Yeah, my garage is gone, I must go and get this stuff done. I mean, my garage, it's just, just by the house. It's, I like this Golf, it's a nice car, and uh, the old car will get a second life, look at that. Now you need to tie those bolts. Is in the torques tight good now time for our ignition distributor actually the ignition con ignition module there's no distributor but. ignition motors spark plug wires spark plugs make sure you're putting them in a proper place okay good the little plastic bracket on top of the oil filter housing for that that is for alternator wire and bunch of other wires to run make sure that on hand we're connected the oil pressure sensor no no it's not an oil pressure sensor that was a, a crankshaft position sensor we connected oil pressure sensor is on a side of the oil house oil house oil filter housing connect that we're still not going to connect the ignition module keep it disconnected for now we'll get to that back later 
just watch the, how all those wires run just make sure they are not entangled make sure they are not going any uh, weird ways it needs to be put in the same original position how was it you can go to the first episode and watch when we were removing the engine everything is clear all right now the power steering reservoir bracket and there is a uh, perch solenoid for the evaporation emission system all right there is a power steering reservoir pretty simple the remote we're putting in the same place hard to put it wrong I know this interesting thing about the fixing my own vehicles. It's what I only do. And uh, when I fix my, when I need to fix my car, I just do it as my project, and it takes me three times longer to take everything apart and to put it, everything back. It's just way less time, even if it's months or two months later. All this works, just remember everything, and I found how memory works. I mean, there's just pay attention to details, it will be not a big of a deal to put everything in the same place. And uh, it sounds to me it's kind of should be backwards, but it's that way, yeah. Coolant reservoir and that expansion tank, put it back. Coolant level, sensor, connection, connect that, time for accessories driven belt, put that guy back, there's a rolling diagram, that how, it's pretty simple, this car actually doesn't have the AC compressor, which is one more, one less pulley. As a pulley tensioner, I'm using just adjustable wrench, aka crescent wrench. Just pull the wrench towards you and get that belt on an alternative pull. Make sure you out get those uh, grooves on the belt aligned with the grooves on the pulleys. And check it out. Look at that. Ooh, belt installed. That's all in place. Ready to be. Not ready to be fired out, but belt is there. Almost getting there. Removing the old oil filter, I like to leave that there for now, but uh, time to replace it. Because I really a new one, we'll put a new oil. Bosch parts, high quality. I like to use this almost. OEM quality, I mean almost is a great quality products. I just cannot go wrong with Bosch. Just new filter for good filtration and clean engine. There's a part number. If we install a filter, apply a light coat of fresh engine oil to the rubber o-ring. That's the way to do it. Make sure your oil filter has a uh, surface is clean okay, and put the oil into the filter don't let your engine have any oil starvation before a pump will pump, fill the filter Just get it ready and I will say it again never ever tie the oil filter with any wrenches or tools I'll just go by hand so it stops just do half or three quarters of the turn after that and it will be sealed it won't leak don't over torque half to three quarters it's totally fine check it out if then stop stop it air injection pump put it back three 10 millimeters nuts tie those ones
air injection pump connect that other one is goes to the EGR valve on top upper plenum and tank manifold put a new gasket there's a paper metal kind of gasket upper and take manifold to the lower manifold should be torqued to 15 pounds you see that i put that picture start from the center and then go to the sides when you tighten bolts pretty straightforward now there's allen bolts and now it's all that uh, vacuum line for the intake manifold the one at the back Boom. Fuel line, uh, fuel, return line. Fuel lines, uh, return and fuel feed line. Put them back to that pressure regulator valve. Put they all way in and place those uh, hose clamps into that original position, then won't leak. Like that. You will see those markings from the clamps. Okay, those uh, hoses are connected on that side of the engine and little vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator. Connect that, that's important little hose. Boom. With a little clip. Timing belt uh, cover gasket. No, timing, ga timing belt cover time. All good on this side. Okay, check everything one more time from the firewall all up to the side. There's all connected belt, all wiring for the starter. This is our for the fan belt. Uh, yeah, no, this one is for in air injection pump. Connect that. There's uh, some left uh, throttle body coolant line. Connect that one. Electrical connector for the throttle module. All right, there's air filter housing and air intake pipe with a bunch of hoses, uh, connections, there's a mass airflow sensor, and so and so. Place that air filter housing in a place. Put the clamps over the pipes as an air and duct pipe. Keep connecting all those uh, pipes and hoses. There's a vacuum line for the fuel injection line. All those uh, rubber hoses needs to be connected in the proper spot. Make sure you're not missing anything. There's a line for the throttle body. There's a vacuum line.
Seems to be good. If it's perfect, it's good enough. Yeah, I said it before. On this video, it's only 50, 53 minutes. And in real life, it took me about four and a half hours to get everything done. My cell phone sensor connected. Air injection pipe connect pipe to the air intake. There is a, now it's time to secure it down. There is a bolt around. Do those ones. Now the battery bracket mount where our battery will sit. Put that back. Watch for the uh, negative terminal wire. Make sure it goes under the bracket. There is a certain slot. Otherwise, it won't reach the terminal. And make sure you pay attention to that. Look at that. Ooh, almost everything's done. Only a few things are still needs to be installed a check in again make sure everything is connected before we'll be able to move forward see a uh, power steering or belt or pulleys all in place on bolts and nuts oh, here we go there's a buddy watching make sure everything's going right Checking out on the starter side, as you can see, our ignition is still unplugged. Not a time to put it back. Hold that connector, take the oil filler cap off, nice and clean. We build a new motor from two broken ones, not broken ones, but uh, one had a problem with a head, another had a problem with a crankshaft. We just uh, built a good motor using a new and used good parts. Alright, time from the front install. There's a front assembly with a radiator, blower fan, headlights, all that good stuff needs to put back. There's a fasteners and there is a way how you can fit it inside and as you can see there is a threaded holes oh our headlight fall off. connector fall off check for that there's a connectors for the temperature sensor and the electrical fan that's uh, we're going to do soon and our upper and lower radiator hoses time for them is coming and as you can see we put that all right there's the headlights and there is a bolt for holding that uh, front assembly in place on a passenger side put it there make sure the fitment is uh, everything's aligned and uh, you need to pay attention for those gaps Tie those ones as you can see it's pulled up now it's uh, time for the coolant hoses connect them there's another one now on the thermostat side Check your drain cock, make sure it's in a closed position. We're going to put a coolant soon. Connect the temperature sensor for the radiator. Click, click. Radiator coolant fan connector. Put that one back. 
that's important part make sure everything's connected take that straw and just go. or a hood hood log Oh, we're almost done. Just one missing a bumper. That part breaks so easy, and it's a dipstick uh, tube on all Volkswagen. They're always broken. If you go to this uh, scrap yard, that's always broken. Just be careful. And now it's just time for the fresh oil. Engine still on the pre assembly loop, and we're putting the oil. Play place to rag around the filler neck make sure if it'll spill on spill on the engine spill on the rag and put the fresh oil check your owner's manual how much oil you need to put what type of oil okay as soon as you put that right amount of oil check the oil on the dipstick make sure it's there here you go I have almost to the top but I know there's a oil uh, oil filter is not full. I just put about uh, three quarters of it because you put a more than that, you will spill because it's mounted a little bit on an angle. Coolant time I filled up a coolant. Install the battery. Make sure your battery is fully charged. You need it. And all electronics is a science of connections. Clean the battery terminals, make sure you have a good connection. Also, go and clean your battery clamps. You got an idea. Yeah, flip it, and clean it. And when you install the battery, start with a positive battery terminal, tie it, and then attach the negative otherwise if you accidentally touch the ground of the vehicle or touch the body or any metal part you will short the electrical system might just cause some electrical damage at minimum you will blow the main fuse yeah stay on a safe side <laughs> good connection tie the clamp Ooh, okay now we need to crank the engine because we're going to do it the first time with the starter our ignition still disconnected we connected the battery Time to turn the key. Okay, we turn the key to the on position. Okay, everything's connected. First time has been sitting for two and a half months. Oh, we have a transmission lock working on the park. Okay, push your gas pedal all the way down to the floor. That's known as a fuel shut off mode for the pump you won't flood your engine with excessive amount of fuel just do that and crank the engine with a starter a few times let the oil be pumped up a little bit moved around it won't do much but uh, you want to do that before you start now time to start start cranking you can see put the ignition module connector back okay and now we're going to do the prime and the fuel you turn ignition to the on position listen for uh, fuel pump to respond and make a audible sound or priming a relay will click you will see sound from the fuel pump priming the fuel do it three times because our fuel lines are all dry and fired up 
Look at that. Ooh. Fired up right away. We did everything right, you know. We rebuilt the engine, built it right. There will be more videos how we did that. But this is just installation, and we need to still bleed the air from the cooling system. But it's running, it's running really good. And time when I'm editing this video, that engine is still rocking good and working like a brand new. We got a few thousand kilometers on, like a, or about 5,000 kilometers since that engine was installed, and that engine just a dream. All right, wow, we did it. <laughs> it took us a while, especially to get all parts, but we did it. If you still have some questions or don't understand anything. I just, uh, yeah, ask in the comments below. Okay, keep adding the coolant. And our engine warmed up and thermostat open. And uh, squeeze those hoses, uh, help the air be bled from the coolant system. Probably will take a while, but just let the engine run and then wait until it will stop bubbling into the in the inside that uh, coolant expansion tank watch that reservoir so that's important part we first we are checking our oil pressure we started it runs good no problems fired up runs strong seems to be smooth and we need to check the oil pressure make sure we have good clearances i know they're good but we need to check we have good pressure which is uh, what we're watching for remember we had a good compression on an old engine which was original to this car we had a good compression but no oil pressure at all we have a good oil pressure that's our our kind of goal Okay, compression test, cylinder number one, cylinder number two, cylinder number three, as you can see it's consistent, no difference between the cylinders, and that is awesome. Okay, time to take it for a drive, fire it up. Oh guys, <laughs> I'm very satisfied and so happy that vehicle was saved. We got a new engine built installed we did it and thank you so much for watching if you like it click that subscribe button and bell and if you have any comments or you want to say hey you missed this you did this wrong just comment down in the section below i would like to hear that and i will be improving my videos at just um, my home projects and uh, yeah, let's say if it will help at least a few people, I will be very happy. Alright, have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.